Hey guys, I'm Tim. You probably know that, but what you are probably wondering is why I'm going to Alaska. Okay, so a few months ago, I got out of the army active duty and I'm really trying to you know, hone in on the purpose I've found in these past few years. Some little bit of background information on me. I used to work in IT and marketing, hated it, joined the military to pay for college in one way, do something different, strive for that something more. And I'm not finished with that journey quite yet but I'm able to concurrently explore other avenues of my life. I always knew that office life and office work was not for me. And to be honest, I should have listened to my parents. Ever since childhood, they said, Tim, you should be a nurse. Well, you know, I guess it's in my genes and I really do love medical work. I love medical care. I love helping patients receive the best patient care possible. So long story short, I became an EMT. I've been an EMT for about a year. Nothing crazy, no 911 experience. Basically just Ubering old people, geriatrics to and from dialysis places, doctor's appointments. So this job I got in Alaska, hours away from Anchorage, I'm going to be the EMT, the sole medical provider for a tiny fishing village called Ugashik. Right now I'm in Anchorage and I'm just kind of documenting my entire journey so that one day my kids can see that their dad used to be cool. Um, I don't have kids by the way right now, but I do want them at some point. It's already been so cool so far, and all I've done is step off the plane from Raleigh, right here in Anchorage, Alaska, where everything is beautiful already. I'm in downtown Anchorage. It is 6.20 a.m., and it's been daytime for about four hours already. I'll give you guys the view. Yeah, pretty nice. Pretty nice, and it's crazy to think that it's gonna get even better. But yeah, I don't really have a plan for this series. I'm just gonna go ahead and record whatever I'm doing. I'm sure my family and friends back home or wherever they are in the world are gonna be extremely curious what I'm gonna be doing for five weeks. And I don't really know what to expect, to be honest, so. As you guys are going to go through this, I'm going through it in real time as well. So I'm really excited to share this extremely new part of my life with you guys. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is get some breakfast. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to try to wrestle one of these guys. This Pilot Samovar tea, it's really cinnamony, aromatic. Okay, so here is the reindeer sausage. Let's try a bite. Alright, here we go. Oh, it's pretty good. Tastes like Polish sausage pretty much. But different. I don't really know how to describe it. Full of sausage, but different. So that was the Snow City Cafe. Highly recommend if you guys are ever in Anchorage for any reason. That was probably the best Ex Benedict I've ever had and I hate Ex Benedict. This tea, I'm actually walking to go to the tea shop right now so I can buy some. 
for the next few weeks. It was, this is fucking good shit. So far, this really reminds me of Colorado. I mean, look at those mountains in the distance. They look absolutely beautiful. Can't wait till I can get a little bit closer to them. This is actually the tea shop that I went to in downtown Anchorage. So let's see what they have here. They have some here. This one brewed up, Alaskan ingredients. Also gonna get a donut. Here's the samovar donut. Same flavor as that tea I got. Pretty damn good. And apparently this is called fireweed. <laughs> it's not spicy, but it's actually grown here in Alaska. So let's try this. It's good. I don't really know what it tastes like, but it's yummy. And then right here, it's a berry-based tea with berries grown found natively in Alaska. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's super good. It tastes like berries, but it's like a minty berry that I've never had before. We got four of my five bags here right now. So, waiting for the last one. All right, these guys are my employers for five weeks. Basically what happened was I checked five bags in Raleigh and then four came here. So the last one, which has all my food, is in Seattle or Anchorage. So we're gonna try to figure that out. Cause I, you know, I, I, all I know is that Ugashik, am I saying it right? Yeah. Ugashik is extremely small village, only 50 people. No There's stores. no supermarkets, right? No store, no, no stores. And uh, I think they get, I don't know if they even have a post office. Oh, wow. Okay, so since Alaskan Airlines lost my bag, um, I got shacked up here in a bed and breakfast, not bad. It's pretty much a basement. It's got a bed. It's all I need, really. TV, so we're living life in luxury. Okay, so this is not Coachella. That's a water tower. And that's gonna serve as a landmark for how we can get back home. And to be honest, Dillingham is not too large, actually. If I had to guess, everywhere that's relevant is in to the center of town is around two square miles, maybe three. But other than that, I don't think I'm gonna be doing a lot of walking. So there's two restaurants um, in Dillingham. So I'm gonna check both of them out, see which one is better. Apparently they only serve burgers and pizza. So I'm gonna go ahead and check it out, see if that's true. Uh, I was hoping to eat some nice seafood, but Strangely enough, despite this being a seafood mecca in terms of fishing, it only goes straight to packaging and processing. Most people here don't even eat that much fish unless they catch it themselves, and most of them don't. So I ended up wandering around town looking for a place to eat, and it was true. Nowhere had anything good to eat, so I was feeling adventurous, and I just started asking random people for their food suggestions. This one guy suggested a bar, something that no one had mentioned, and I'll just let you see what happened next. Okay, I wandered into a bar, I found these guys, and they're real fishermen, so... What's your name, man? Uh, I'm Colin Wallace, and I'm up here fishing in Bristol Bay, drinking beers at the Sea Inn with uh, Tim, and it's my crew member, uh, Junior, and we're gonna go catch 400,000 pounds worth of salmon here. If you had to sum up, like, what your job is in, like, 
one or two minutes, like, what do you have to say about it? Uh, persistence would be good. Uh, would be a good way to to go about it. Having a good attitude, being a part of uh, being a part of the team. Uh, everybody's gonna fall behind a little bit sometimes, and you got to be able to pick that kind of stuff up. Your crew is kind of like your family. And, uh, once you, yeah, your crew, crew is family. family. I like that quote. You know, it's like you got to like really trust the guy next to you. Yeah. I mean, I'm never gonna like hate on him because he's got my back and I got his back. And... Everybody's when you're working really hard and you haven't eaten and you haven't slept. And you haven't <laughs> slept. Everybody gets cranky and it's it, it's really good to have people bite their tongue around you and deal with it and pick up your slack and vice versa and, and, and just be able to get through it because it all sucks all the time. So that's it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's good to have guys like him on there that fucking just kind of live oh, liven yeah. it up anyway. I mean, when you had 40 minutes of sleep, and you're going out on deck and you're putting on wet shit and trying to go at it again. It's always nice to have somebody that's suffering with you and making it a comedic, like, relief, you know? Ah, oh, you're a joker. <laughs> okay, that's good. No, it's just, we, we, you need those guys yeah. on the boat. I mean, everybody needs to have that. Yeah. Like, you can't that have attribute. a crew, you can't have a team full of hard asses or else it's just gonna be, like, way no. too much. What do you have to say about, like, uh, fishing and how did you get into it i was just, i was born into it and i love it and it's it's uh it's a part rush. of me no it's part it's, of me it's just a part of it it's just a part of life some would say it's his third leg <laughs> <laughs> see that's why we got him <laughs> how long have you been doing this all my life so what is that like 20 years oh thank <laughs> you very much yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 44. 44. Still my job. <laughs> That's crazy. So over 40 years. That's when you're. Wasn't it when you were you were, you were three and Greg was five and you guys were still going down the boat and doing the summer shit. Yep. So your dad did this. My dad. Yeah, it's a generational uh, yeah. thing. It's generational, yeah. My parent. I'm the youngest of seven. I'm Filipino. Oh I'm shit, the dude. You're so tall. <laughs> <laughs> My brother's six foot, but um, I'm the only one who was born in the U.S. Oh, okay. Everybody else, um, I think we moved over in '81, and I was born in '83. Nice. But you gotta, yeah, you gotta watch that. All right, that, that extra video. Tough. Try to find like where it's at. I definitely will. I definitely will. Wait, dude. So, kaya ka magsalita Tagalog or kapunta lang? Kapunta lang. Um, intindihan or all? Yeah. Ako rin. In, 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 mahirap. Yeah. Mahirap magsalita. Salta. Thank you. Dude, that's so... I thought you were like native, but I guess like... No, I get that all the time. Yeah, dude. I feel like Filipinos, we're like ethnically ambiguous. Cause like... Um, no, it doesn't like, dude, matter. You don't like, even know. Like when, we're in, when I was in college, hiking up the mountain, ran into a Hawaiian. Like, hey, what island are you from? <laughs> Not actually, the Kodiak Island. <laughs> and then, like, one time when I was going down to California and I'm on the ground, and this fucking Mexican guy kept looking at me, like, nodding at me, and then he, like, tried to talk to me in Spanish, and I was like, dude, I don't fucking speak Spanish. <laughs> I get mistaken for everything except for Filipino. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, that does make sense. Are your parents nurses or? Because, <laughs> like, my, my parents are or nurses. Or working at the post office? <laughs> What did you just ask? I asked if his parents were nurses. Cause like, dude, that's like what my, that's what, it, if you meet a Filipino, most of their parents are gonna be nurses. Or work at the post office. Yeah. <laughs> no, they work at the cannery. Okay. Yeah, that was cheap labor, that's what brought them to Kodiak. Oh. And it was like during the Marcus, Marcus's oh, yeah, reign, yeah. yeah Marcus. That's crazy, Um, because my mom was telling me, she's like, you're probably going to meet some Filipinos out there. I was like, I really doubt it. But she's like, no, like, no one wants to live there, but it's still America, so a lot of us still want to go like, over there. Quick, quick work, you know, yeah. quick work. After a few hours of conversation, 
Chad the skipper, the guy in the camo hat, was kind enough to invite me back to the harbor to check out his boat. friendlier showed me on their boat and this is the kind of experience that I wanted you know coming to Alaska don't know what to expect have no expectations just really growing meeting people learning and experiencing new things so if this is an indication of how these next five weeks are gonna go I'm super excited for what's to come. Thank you. 